One of the most common questions I get asked in Madden 24 is how to read the defense. See, a lot of players don't understand how to tell the difference between certain coverages and really diagnose what the defense is doing. So in today's video, I'm going to break down how to read the defense like a pro and break down all different coverages and defenses so you can win more games. Let's get into it now. YouTube, what is up? It is your boy Duke back here from sportsgamers.com and this video is going to take your game to the next level. See, being able to read the defense is one of the biggest keys in becoming an elite Madden player. Now, I will say most players, they know, they know how to read the difference between man and zone defense. What most players really struggle, struggle with is knowing the difference between different zones. Hey, are they playing cover two, cover three, cover four, cover four cl cloud, excuse me, cover three cloud, match? Um, is this a hard flat, a cloud flat? Are they using zone drops? You know, all this type of advanced stuff is really important to know. And a lot of players don't realize that there are pre-snap and post-snap reads that you have to be able to really understand in order to play this game at a high level. So... I'm going to just get straight into it. You know, this can be applied to any playbook or offense you use. And I'm just in the Jets playbook in this video with the gun, bunch, strong, offset. Now, I will say it is best to use, you know, formations on offense that are compressed. What I mean by compressed, have multiple receivers lined up close instead of out wide because it gives more coverage tells. So, like, bunch formations are compressed because you get the bunch basically compressed instead of spread out, right? So bunch formations, tight formations, those are really, really, really good. So there's a lot of different reads out here that you're going to need to make. So let me just line up, get right into it. And as a reminder, if you want more high-level Madden 24 content like this, I do tips, I play, play uh, the gameplays on my channel. Make sure you subscribe, drop me a like, comment on the video. I do appreciate the support. So we're going to break this video down into two different sections, basically. Pre-snap reads, post-snap reads. Pre-snap reads are basically what you're looking at before you snap the ball. Post-snap reads are how you break down the defense once you actually do snap the ball. Both are very important and are going to play a factor into the plays you call, the setups you use, and the reads you make. So let's just start with pre-snap, right? So like pre-snap, what am I looking at? Well, one of the biggest things I look at pre-snap is if they're base aligned or not. Because base aligned is going to basically have the defense line up the same way no matter what play I call. And I know they're base aligned if basically their DBs are spread out wide as they are here. If I was not in base aligned, basically, you know, there'd be a lot of coverage tells which base aligned hides. Now, if I see them in base aligned, I know there's a probably a big chance that they're in zone, right? Because no one's going to run base aligned man because if, if your defenders are spread out in man... Uh, it's not going to be good coverage. So I can quickly see if you're in man or zone very easily just by if you're base aligned or man aligned, right? Pretty simple because this is like a zone. You guys can see that the DBs are lined up on the bunch side outside of my receivers. Clearly indicates zone. There'd be no sense of doing this if you're a man. If you were a man, I'm about to show you guys the difference. You would be in a man alignment, which would mean your DBs would be, you know, just lined up directly over the receivers. So let's look at the difference. Um, here, we're going to go ahead and press it. You guys can see this is, this, this gives a man look because now I got the DBs lined up directly over the top of the receivers, you know, in a press alignment indicates it's probably man to man coverage, right? So once again, guys, you can see here, DB spread out in a base alignment, most likely zone as is this cover four. And you can see cover two, cover three, cover four. It really doesn't matter when you give off this base alignment nine times out of 10, they're going to be in zone, whereas man, you guys can see here, this is a man look with the receivers directly lined up, or I'm sorry, the def defensive backs lined up directly over the top of your receivers. This is why it's very important to run bunch or a formation where you're compressed because, you know, if I was in a, in a spread formation like this, you guys can see the tails are no longer there because since we're spread out, we don't really make the DBs indicate what they're doing. You guys can see here in man, or zone, so this is cover three. Here's man. I mean, you got basically the DBs right over the top of the guys uh, anyways. Now, of course, you could press them or not press them, but this is very similar 
Whereas when I was just in bunch, it was very obvious if, if I was in man or zone. So let's get back into bunch and keep going. So once I determine, hey, they're in man, they're in zone, now it goes deeper. Man to man is like honestly very easy to beat, right? There's certain routes that beat man coverage pretty much very consistently, if not every time on this year's game. That's why most players play zone, because zone is a little bit more complex. So once I'm like, okay, they're in zone, now I'm trying to determine what type of zone they might be in. So now I'm looking at if their DBs are baseline, but are they pressed or back up? Because when they're pressed like this, you know nine times out of 10 if you see a pressed zone. Do you want to become a better Madden player and win more games? If so, check out my premium Madden strategy website, sportsgamers.com. I have built sportsgamers.com to provide you with the best Madden tips, best Madden ebooks and schemes, all from the pros at the lowest price possible. I have helped thousands upon thousands of Madden players improve their games, and I can help you as well. Our VIP Madden membership is our best offer yet. This membership will include all of our Madden ebooks all year long and hundreds of weekly Madden Vault tip updates to keep you ahead of the game. Click the link in the description and use coupon code DUKE for 10% off your order. That they're in some sort of cover 3 or cover 4. And the reason for this is most players will not press in cover 2. Most players will not press in cover 2 and that is because that if you press in cover 2, no matter what zone drop depth you have set to your flats, your flats are going to get ran by. So if I see a pressed zone, I'm thinking cover 3 or cover 4. If I see a zone with the outside corners backed up, as I do here, I'm thinking probably cover two because I know most players that like to run cover two keep their zones backed up. Now, there are certain exceptions to this, like a cover three cloud. A cover three cloud is going to be more so a combo coverage where it's cover two on one side, cover three on the other. And you can kind of get away with pressing cover three cloud because even the side that has the flat zone has a third over the top of it instead of a deep half by the safety. And I'll show you guys what I mean, which is going to basically defend the sidelines a lot better. Thirds by safeties defend the sidelines a lot better than a deep half. So someone might feel a little bit more comfortable pressing a cover three cloud. And see, this is what I mean. It's technically covered three on the left and cover two on the right, which is why this is called cover three cloud. So now that you guys know the basis of how I'm reading what the defense is doing, just the most basic things I'm looking at before I snap the ball, now I want to get into post-snap reads. Now, most people really struggle with their post-snap reads because they don't even, most players have no idea what they even need to be looking at to begin with. So here's the key. When you snap the ball, you should already have a pretty good idea of what you're expecting. Now, you don't know for sure until you snap the ball, but you should have a very good idea based upon what you see pre-snap and then obviously just the patterns of your opponent's play calling. Are they in man? Are they in zone? Also, if they are in zone, what kind of coverage are you expecting? Are they blitzing? Again, based upon if the DBs are backed up or pressed. And then also just, I mean, what, are, what has your opponent been liking to do most of the game? You pretty much will know. The other thing you really want to locate is the user. So if I haven't located the user pre-snap, as soon as I snap the ball, the first thing I'm doing is finding the user, okay? And while I'm doing that, I'm also reading the outside corner on my bunch receiver side. So this is what a lot of people don't understand. They're like, who do I look at after the snap? I don't know. Well, some people will look at the safeties to try to see that the safeties spread out wide as they do in cover two. Do What does one rotate to the middle as in cover three? Or do they each play a fourth of the field? Or really, you know, fourth. Uh, as in a cover four. A lot of people look at the safeties and that's just completely wrong because unless you're trying to bomb for a one play touchdown, there's really no point in looking at the safeties because it's, it's just, it's not the best way to do it. And the reason for this is if I look at the outside corner on the bunch side within a split second, I'll know what he's in and knowing what he's in tells me what the rest of the defense is in. And that might sound complicated, but let me explain. So I'm going to use the same play for what I'm about to show you, the example I'm about to show you, this whole section of this video, and you're gonna, this is gonna make so much more sense. So I'm just gonna do corner strike over and over and over again. And um, basically guys, I'm gonna just read this outside right corner on the bunch side, and I'm gonna tell you how this works. So a play like corner strike, let me just go ahead and snap the ball, this is cover four. Go ahead and snap the ball. And I'm gonna want you guys to focus on that outside right corner. Let's focus on the outside right corner in corner strike. Okay, so clearly I could tell that right off the bat he was in a deep zone, right? 
And because I knew he was in a deep zone, that tells me that the defense is in either cover three or cover four, right? Some variation. And how do I know this? Well, I know that that outside corner is in a deep zone because as soon as I snap the ball, see how he turns his hips and bails out in his zone drop? He turns his hips and bails. That indicates he is in a deep zone. Now, as soon as I recognize he's in a deep zone, like I said, I know it's either cover three or cover four, but honestly, I call plays that will be cover three or cover four the same way, so it doesn't matter. All I need to determine is if they're in cover two or cover four or cover three, like cover two or anything else, basically. I just need to know if it's a flat zone or a deep zone over there. That's it. Now, what I'm also doing is locating the user because I just need to know the coverage cell and then where the user is because the user is the wild card. I need to make sure I know where the user is so I avoid him and I need to know what the coverage shell is so I know how to attack what areas of the field do I want to attack. For instance, with corner strike, I'm doing a double corner concept where I have a short corner, a deep corner, a flat, and a streak. I know that in any situation where that outside corner is in a deep zone, that short corner will get open on the sideline because the deep zone will have to check the deeper corner and I have the flat occupied by the running back. I know this. I also know the only way they can stop that is with the user, which is why I have a drag over the middle of the field to basically attack the spot the user should be if the user chooses to vacate that. So again, let me just, I want you guys to just focus on this outside corner on the right. See how as soon as I snap the ball, he's turning and bailing. And run, that's a deep zone. Now I want you guys to see the difference between that and cover two. Cover two is going to be a flat zone. So let's look at the difference. This looks the same pre-snap. Like it's, it's, you know, it's the same look, but it's going to react way differently when you snap the ball. So let's go ahead and break this down. So again, this is the same play setup, guys. The same exact play setup. Watch this. So here, I don't know if you guys see the difference, but like to me, this is extremely obvious. Now, right there, had the worst throw in the world, so we're going to do that again. But like if you guys didn't notice, that defense was literally night and day different. Literally night and day different. All right, so let's just do this again. Let's just do this again. Um, same defense. This is going to be cover two. And I'm going to run the same play on offense. At least I'm trying to run the same play at offense. And hopefully we get a good throw this time so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But look. So that was clearly a flat zone. How do I know that that's a flat zone? And it doesn't matter if it's a hard flat, cloud flat, soft squat. Does not matter. All I need to know is it's a flat in general. So the way you can tell that outside right corner is in a flat zone is because... Look at it. He's just sitting, staring into the backfield, staring at the quarterback. His eyes are on the quarterback. He never turns his hips and bails in his own drop. He's squatting, staring at the quarterback. That's a flat zone. So as soon as I see that corner in a flat zone, I know this is cover two or at least cover three cloud, but most likely it's going to be cover two. And I can verify this by seeing all the hook zones, like also in the middle of the field. It's cover two. Now, this is important because if I recognize cover two on this play, I know that the deeper corner route is going to get over the top because of the fact that it's a pressed flat. And honestly, even if it was zone drop backed up, a deeper corner will get over it either way. So when you have a play plays designed to where all you have to do is determine the shell like this because of the basically the spaces you're attacking, you already know what areas of the field you're attacking. And then once you know what the coverage is you know what areas will be open and that's why as long as if you know where the user is this is just cake work to beat the defense so as soon as i recognize oh your db he's in a flat and you guys see i can see this within a second of snapping ball i already know all oh, it's covered too i know where your user is i already know where i'm beating you with this fast and this is how you have to do it in a game against a live opponent you have to be seeing these things this fast now the best way to do this is to get reps whether it's playing uh, you know, your friends or just online games, or if you two controllers, just go into practice mode and do this stuff until you get very comfortable reading the movements of the defenders and knowing what they are instantly, basically. Because the faster you can diagnose what you're seeing, the faster you can make your reads. A lot of players, they say, oh, everything's moving too fast. And it's just because you don't have enough reps. Practice makes perfect, just like anything else. The more reps you get, the more comfortable you're going to be, the faster and better you're going to be. 
Hope this video helped. There's a lot more to this, don't get me wrong. But, you know, I wanted to start you guys off with like a little 15-ish minute video just breaking down some of the most important stuff. And if you guys would like to see me go way more in depth on this into different assignments and, you know, lots of other things too, give me 500 likes on this video and I'll post a part two that goes a lot more in depth. Until next time, it's your boy Duke and I'm out of here.